The heroism of the Iranian women during the Qajar era holds a special place in the history of Iran. Towards the end of 19th century, Zarin Taj Uratul Ain was a well-educated woman, talented poet, and passionate advocate of freedom and women's rights. She specialized in the fields of ethics, religion, and philosophy, creating a widely adored collection of poetry. Because of her self-expression, she was executed in the Ilkhani Orchard on the orders of Qajar King Nasreddin Shah, orchestrated by the fundamentalist clerics. The Iranian women's movement first emerged sometime after the Iranian Constitutional Revolution in 1910, the year in which the women themselves published their first journal. Dr. Masume Kahal was the woman behind Iran's first weekly publication titled Knowledge. Masume was the first woman journalist and ophthalmologist in Iran. Amidst the Iranian constitutional revolution, the newly formed parliament invited American advisor Morgan Schuster to help manage the country's financial position. 1911 is considered one of the most significant years in the history of the women's movement in Iran. Because women were in the forefront to fund the first independent national bank Schuster helped establish with money they had raised and their personal possessions such as jewelry. In spite of tremendous colonial pressures from Britain and Russia, 300 women rose in support of the new parliament and challenged the conservative factions in order to maintain independence from foreign countries. In 1919, journalist and women's rights activist Sadiqe Dolat Habadi initiated the publication Zaban Zanan, or Language of Women, from the historic city of Esfahan. This was the first publication dedicated to women at the provincial levels that faced bitter opposition by the clergy and was finally banned. Several years later, Sedire became the first Iranian woman to attend the 10th Congress of International Alliance for Women's Suffrage. In 1920, activist Muhtaram Iskandari founded the Patriotic Women's Association. She was also the editor-in-chief of the association's publication, Peke Saadat, which supported women's rights and advocated women's education. Muhtaram designed courses in literacy and vocational training, establishing an extensive network of women in various segments and classes of Iranian society. Reza Khan, the first monarch of the Pahlavi era, launched a bloody oppression in 1921 to put an end to the tribal rule and establish an authoritarian government guised as modernization. In doing so, he ordered the compulsory unveiling of women, resulting in a widespread backlash as it temporarily withheld women social participation due to the disrespectful approach to the mandate. Seclusion from social activities added to the sad experiences of sensitive and tender souls, making the popular poet Parvine Tesomi the most sincere voice of an oppressed and suffering people. Harbin was born to an artistic and literary family in 1906, beginning her poetry at age 8 and continuing until her young passing at the age 25. Her work of 210 poems became the mirror of an unjust and cruel world comprised of the corrupt judiciary and clergy rulers. To display her disapproval of the dictatorship, she refused to enter the private court of Reza Shah and even discarded the medals offered to her by the Shah's Ministry of Culture. In the 1940s, during the reign of Muhammad Reza Shah, women played a pivotal role in the oil nationalization movement led by Dr. Musaddiq, significantly shifting British dominance in Iran. With Dr. Musaddiq leading the national democratic movement, women were able to make great progress. In 1952, women won the right to vote in municipal elections. In 1953, a new social code was adopted, broadening equal rights for women. Farooq Farrokhzad is arguably one of Iran's most influential female poets of the Pahlavi era. 
she conquered limiting barriers of self-expression and social aspirations women faced, which ultimately led to the complete banning of her poetry by the Islamic Republic after her death. Some view her as a symbol of courage who gave a strong feminine voice to the contemporary Iranian women. Negah Khan, look, is one of Furu's most famous poems that depicts the sacrifices Iranians have made for freedom and liberation throughout the country's history. Fatemi Amini, a leading activist in the Iranian people's struggle for freedom, was among those rare women who opposed Mohammad Reza Shah's dictatorship in the 1970s. The stories of her resistance in the Shah's notorious prisons and death under torture inspired the next generation of women to partake in social and political change. Abreast with Fatime, Marzie Ahmadi Osgui and Mehnoush Ibrahimi are two heroic women who also sacrificed their lives while paving the path to freedom in Iran. Both women were executed by the Shah's regime. Ghazale Alizadeh was an intellectual novelist born in 1946 who published her first collection of stories after summer in 1976. She was found dead in 1996 hanging from a tree as part of the chain murders of the 1990s due to cultural and political openness of her writings. In February of 1979, in the absence of a unified opposition front in the struggle against Shah's dictatorship, Khomeini asserted his hypocritical religious standing to hijack the leadership of the Iranian revolution. Khomeini misused the already established network of mosques and seminaries to gain credibility among the masses and impose a religious dictatorship shortly after the overthrow of Shah, taking advantage of people's aspiration for independence and freedom. To protest this situation, the People's Mujahideen of Iran, the PMOI, built a popular pro-democracy movement against Khomeini. Women played a major role in post-revolution protests, particularly on March 8, 1979, in which thousands poured in the streets to protest compulsory veiling on International Women's Day. On June 20, 1981, an amazing 500,000 people responded to the call for a non-violent march by the PMOI against repression. The shouts of, down with dictator and long live liberty, resonated through the streets of Tehran. Khomeini ordered his forces to open fire on unarmed people, killing hundreds and arresting thousands. That day marked a historical milestone when the regime lost its legitimacy. The next day, mass executions of political prisoners and widespread persecution of activists began, portraying the true brutal face of the Iranian regime. Among the victims were many unidentified women and high school girls whose pictures were published in order for their bodies to be identified and claimed. Ashraf Rajavi was pioneering Iranian activist who was a political prisoner under the Shah's regime, where she was tortured and sentenced to life in prison. Yet, in early 1979, she was the last female among the last group of political prisoners to be released by the people from the Shah's prison. After the 1979 revolution, Ashraf played a major role in developing the capacity of young girls and women, leading social change through raising awareness, advocacy, and organizational education. On February 8, 1982, the Iranian regime's Revolutionary Guard Corps killed her in a raid at her residence. Camp Ashraf was named in her honor. From 1981 to present time, a massive crackdown has been taking place on the civil rights and liberties of the Iranian people. Over 120,000 political prisoners have been executed in Iran. Nearly a third of these victims were women, including the elderly, pregnant, and even minors. The backward and disempowering policies of the regime aim at discouraging women from social participation, restricting them from independence, making them subservient to men, and humiliating them from early childhood. Misogynist laws also limit the professional development of women by forbidding girls from pursuing certain education and careers. This became a major focus for human rights activists and reporters like freelance photojournalist Zahra Kazemi, 
Zahra was a Canadian Iranian who decided to cover the strength of women who underwent poverty and oppression in Iran. Because of her ardent belief in freedom of expression and photography of a demonstration outside Tehran's Evin prison, she was arrested, tortured, raped, and beaten to death by Iranian authorities on June 11, 2003. The circumstances of her death, considering her joint citizenship to both countries, attracted an incredible amount of international attention. It was courageous women like Ashraf Sadat Murtazai who sang the echoes of the voiceless like Neda, whose name actually means voice. Ashraf Sadat was famously known by her musical name Marziye as the diva of traditional Persian music. She began her songs in the 1940s, which continued to be the most artistic and meaningful. The Iranian regime banned her from any performance, leaving her no choice but to leave her homeland in the 1990s and devote her life to reconnect with the Iranian people. It was in Paris where she contributed to the pro-democracy movement by joining the National Council of Resistance of Iran in 1994. Marzieh died after a long battle with cancer in October 2010. But her music continues to live through all Iranians with love, tolerance, patience, and beauty. The extent of human rights violation continuously worsened to the point where lashings, amputations, torture, rape, stoning of women, and hangings became regularly practiced and publicized. The first nine months of 2004 marked an accelerated pace of these atrocities, with the execution of 108 people, including minors like Atifah Rajabi, who was only 16 when she was publicly executed on August 15, 2004, in the small town of Mecca. On February 6, 2005, the United Nations Special Rapporteur on Violence Against Women chastised the Iranian regime over their human rights abuses and discriminatory laws. Stoning of women is one of the cruelest forms of capital punishment, yet the religious dictators ruling Iran routinely practice it with the aim to torture the victim to death. As stated in Article 104 of the Iranian regime's penal code, the stones used in stoning should neither be big as to kill the convict at the first or second blow, nor too small that it would not classify as a rock. Despite all the double oppression imposed on Iranian women, they continue to be the leading force in the people's pro-democracy movement. The most recent example of this is the 2009 June uprising where the world witnessed Iranian women striving to free themselves of a religious dictatorship. Shoulder to shoulder, millions of Iranians fought for democratic change, persevering in the face of a brutal repression. Yet, in the vanguard, we find the most determined freedom fighters, the women. An excerpt from a speech by Honorable Kelvin Thompson, member of the Federal Parliament of Australia at the Women's Freedom Forum exhibit. This is a very important event to honor and celebrate 100 years of struggle for women's rights in Iran. And as I said, I'm very pleased to have the opportunity to speak as part of that celebration. Finally, I want to salute the courage of those people in Iran who for over 100 years now have fought the cause of democracy, of human rights, and in particular women's rights for the equal status, treatment, and representation of women. It's clear when we look through the displays that that has taken a great deal of courage indeed. I wish them every success in the future, and I congratulate the organizers of today's exhibition, and I wish you every success in the future also.